I'm an, I'm an electrical engineer graduate from a, okay, so from a university here in Kenya. I'm the current IEEE Women in Engineers Vice Chair. I'm also, and I'm also the Secretary for the Power and Energy Society in Kenya. Uh, so before we go on, if you're not speaking, please would you turn off your mic so we don't have the reflection, the voice reflection. Great. So I'm the I'm also the uh, Power and Energy Society secretary, as mentioned, and I'm currently working with a company called WGSN Energy Solutions, which deals with which pro, which deals with solar energy provision to hard to reach areas in Africa. So I'm really excited that this is the topic we are handling today is actually very much in that line. So our topic, our speakers for today, I'll start uh, with Dr. Celia. So Dr. Shil, if I pronounce your name a little bit off, please forgive me. <laughs> yes, but Dr. Celia Shenaz uh, is, the, is an S senior member of IEEE. She's a fellow for IEB. She has received PhD, PhD degree from the Concordia University in Canada, and she's currently a professor in the department of Tripoli for BUET in Bangladesh since 2015. She's also the chair of IEEE Bangladesh section, and she's the IEEE PES Women in Power Region 10 representative. She is an author of more than 150 international journals, conference papers, and a winner of countless awards, and she has more than 20 years of experience. So of leading impactful technical, professional, ed educational, industrial, and women empowerment, and also humanitarian technology. Pardon? Somebody was saying something? Okay. So she's also in the, she's leading impactful technical, professional, educational, industrial, women empowerment, and humanitarian technology and pest related projects at national in and international levels. So Dr. Celia, thank you so much for joining us today and a uh, very great resume there. So you may be able to say hello to the audience. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Martha, for uh, such a humble introduction. <laughs> Your last name relates one of my friends from Poland. Uh, so uh, thank you for the three organizers who came up with the idea of jointly organizing such a collaborative event. It's a very good way of doing the networking and sharing the knowledge in the area of uh, clean energy and using the role of technology for clean energy. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful initiative. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Celia. So I'll go on to, uh, she's saying very humble, but as we have seen, <laughs> she has quite an impressive uh, resume and you're a very good, a very good inspiration for all of us here. So we are seeing what uh, can be possible in terms of uh, growth and uh, in the energy sector also. So I'll go next to Dr. Kalyan. Now I'm saying it right, I hope. Dr. Kalyan Kaysen. He is co-founder and CTO of Sen Engineering Solutions and has been serving as an IEEE PES Distinguished Lecturer since 2002. So for those of you who don't know Distinguished, distinguished Lecturer means that he's able to hold technical uh, webinars and teachings. So I hope we'll be able to link up for our local sessions here also as well, Dr. Celia also and also Dr. Kalyan. So he's having he's given presentations of, of, of power flow control technology more than 150 times and in 15 countries. So Dr. Kalyan, Kalyan, welcome and uh, say hello, please. Hello, everyone. It is my distinct pleasure to be part of this uh, forum. I'm glad that uh, it is done in this form when uh, we can connect so many participants from so many countries. I wish uh, we had given more time so we could connect to others in India. I, I, I'm, <clears throat> I, I hope that uh, some Indian university could have joined uh, this forum. Uh, but regardless, uh, it is a good start. 
I visited uh, many countries uh, as a PS distinguished lecturer, uh, probably 15 countries or so. And every country I go, my hobby is to collect a flag from that country. And here is my flag from Pakistan. Uh, I went there in 2007. Uh, I haven't visited Sri Lanka or Bangladesh yet, uh, but I hope to uh, visit them uh, in future. But in my role, being a, uh, a lifelong student, I'm still learning. And when <clears throat> I see uh, today the power engineering, uh, it has evolved uh, tremendously since I was a student. I graduated uh, with my bachelor's degree uh, in 1981, so that's 39 years ago. And then I came to US uh, as a student. Uh, my goal was to be here for two years and I'm still here. So I guess my visa hasn't expired and I'm still learning. Uh, it's amazing how power industry has transformed from being what it was till uh, what it is today. And it's still new things are coming um, so it's great to be a lifelong student, and I look forward to share my experience, uh, which uh, links with the theme of this conference. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Kalyan. We are grateful for that wonderful introduction. And I've gotten a new hobby now. We'll start collecting flags. <laughs> so, and also in terms of the collaboration, yeah, I'd also mentioned something to Tabil. So this is our first session, but I believe we can have a collaboration acro across uh, Bangladesh, India, and Kenya as well, come and, uh, and we'll be able to do much, much more greater. So we're already doing great. We can only do uh, much more. So thank you so much for that uh, introduction. Next, I'd like to welcome Preeti. At least I've been able to say your name. <laughs> so Preeti, Dr. Preeti V. Waria, she's currently working as sitting engineer at Vestas Wind Technology India. She Chenya and has postgraduate research focuses on solar and wind energy. Preeti, I think I'm really excited to welcome you because this is an area of I'm also very passionate about. And I'm really happy to see that you'll be able to uh, shed some light for all of us here today with the regard to the same. So thank you so much and welcome, Preeti. Thank you so much, uh, Martha. So uh, it's really a wonderful uh, experience uh, of being here and uh, giving me this opportunity to share about my experiences. So basically, if you consider me, I'm pretty junior to the other two panelists here. Uh, but uh, I'm really happy that uh, you invited me for this uh, panel discussion. and. Uh, gave me a wonderful chance to be with uh, these eminent people. Uh, Celia, of course, I already know her before, uh, but uh, meeting all the others, uh, it, I feel it's going to be really wonderful. So thank you so much. Thank you so much as well. And I'm very excited also to see there are women in this panel. No, <laughs> no prejudice for our fellow men in the panel, but I'm really excited to see that we are having this balance. And uh, I believe if we keep holding each other up, then we keep growing together. So thank you so much, Preeti, and welcome. Um, our next speaker for the day is uh, Mr. Jan Doon. Yes, Mr. Sanaula Khan Jadun. Wow, <laughs> I learned how to speak this properly. So he's the former chairperson of IEEE Comsat Space Chapter and currently works at SOD Electrical and DHA Bawa Bahawa Pool. So he the Coms, Comsat just for members here is one of the one of the organizers for this event. So we're also very excited to have you, Mr. Jadun. Uh, please say hello. Yeah, hi, thank you so much, uh, Martha, for the nice introduction. Uh, it's a very uh, good platform uh, to join with uh, uh, like a senior person like Dr. Kalyan and Dr. Celia Shainaz. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jadun. It seems you have uh, created a very strong team. That's what uh, good leadership actually shows you, that even after he's left, his team is doing still quite well. And the fact that they still want him to be one of the panel, panel speakers for today just shows how much good leadership and motivation can go. So thank you so much and welcome, Mr. Jadun. Uh, 
I believe we've handled all our speakers for the day in terms of introduction. So our members and viewers for today, welcome very much to this panel discussion. We will be talking about how to implement and uh, just a moment, sorry. So yes, uh, some of the topics we are going to handle today. Now I'll go into our first question. So how to overcome electri electricity deficiency in underdeveloped world through innovation in the power and energy sector? So uh, is that directly directing towards me? Yes, yes, Preeti, uh, you can go yeah. ahead. Uh, thanks uh, for the question. So uh, for, according to me, like uh, when you think of electrifying a country, uh, we need to first identify the country's potential of uh, carbon-free sources because uh, that's now the world is now uh, being focused on uh, mainly on the sustainability part. So when you talk about the renewable sources, the most important ones that come into our mind are solar and wind energy. And we have seen a lot of rural electrification programs using solar photovoltaic. A lot of researchers are being undertaken to improve the efficiency of solar. And other key technologies that can be explored include the floating PV, wind energy onshore and offshore, and also the hydro. But potential alone is not enough. There is need for supportive policy frameworks to promote such developments. This will take a bit of time. Uh, it may not be possible to adopt the same strategy used by the matured markets, but learning from them will help identify the potential risks. For example, even if the government implements a power development plan, the country needs money or cash inflows. The local banks may not have enough experience lending a huge amount of money. This adds to the risk. So with proper planning and strategies for reducing the associated risks, foreign banks would also be interested in investing. And we need to find out ways to install proper infrastructure that includes the power grid, transportation, and civil structures, and also have enough human resources. So developing something new creates more job opportunities as well. So it may take few years, but with a strong support from the community and government, it will be possible to address these gaps. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. That's very good. I think what you've just done is making sure to do a root cause analysis because the main problem in most of the time is we try to solve a problem without looking at what is actually causing it and actually addressing that particular issue. So thank you so much for handling it from that angle. I think that's a very good way to look at it and proper planning human resource and make sure that we take the right steps to, to improve the access to energy in this areas. So thank you so much, uh, Preeti. Uh, Kelian also, would you like to contribute to the same? Uh, yeah, I have a small presentation. So may I uh, share my screen? Yes, yes, please go ahead. I, I'm not able to uh, see my share button uh, highlighted. It's grayed out. What it's am I doing maybe, now? If it's grayed out, maybe only the host can be able to share. Mm -hmm. Should I email you my presentation and then uh, we can? Yes, yes. You, can. Okay. Uh, you have my email address if you can. Um, write me something I can attach and send it to you. But in the meantime, while we're doing that, uh, I can say some things. Uh, so the theme of this talk is role of technology. And I also understand that uh, we are uh, uh, trying to propose something here for bringing electricity to those who don't have it. Now, the role of technology, technology ha has been around for a long time. I mean, if you could see my screen, and later you'll see my presentation. Uh, here is 1891 when electricity 
transportation was demonstrated. So that relates to technology. So we have almost 130 years of uh, technology to bring electricity to people. Uh, now, the fact is that we still have over a billion people in the world who don't have electricity. So why don't they have electricity? Uh, so let's start from the problem and then try to make our way to solve the problem. My personal experience is that uh, many of these people, uh, and I have a chart here, uh, a pretty large number, like 300 million in India and uh, Pakistan, it says 32% of the population, uh, Bangladesh, like 40% of the population, and there are many other countries. Uh, they don't have electricity uh, even today. Uh, that's unimaginable to, uh, to us today. Actually, uh, here is the lamp that I used myself when I was a student in India. So once I did not have electricity, now uh, why don't we have electricity for all? It is so uh, affordable today. Uh, is it my uh, role uh, sitting where I'm sitting to bring electricity to everyone? Uh, that didn't happen uh, to me personally. Uh, so why we are thinking about this anyway? Uh, we are thinking about it personally, I can tell you, uh, because I was in that situation uh, uh, someday. And I think it's good to have a pro productive evening for everyone. You know, what a waste of human capital if we uh, don't give people resources to uh, use their time efficiently. In the morning, they wake up and little children and they think that, uh, well, uh, what should I do now? Uh, oftentimes they go and help their parents in their business, whether it's in farming or uh, uh, whatever business they do, uh, picking up fishes from Bay of Bengal, uh, whatever business they have, uh, they go and help parents. So they don't have time to go to school. And then during the day, they go by uh, doing whatever. And then evening comes and now they have time to do something, but there's no electricity. Uh, so again, this this is a cycle that they are in and they never can get out of it uh, generation after generation and, and that's one area that we can uh, uh, address uh, how to resolve we cannot solve the world's problem in this one hour but at least we can start somewhere now uh, this uh, project that i'm talking about is really realizable you know, it's, it's you all, the audience, you can participate. I'm sure you can find a place near you where there is lack of electricity. People who don't have it, they would like to have it. Uh, but, so how do we bring it to them? Uh, and, and it has to be affordable. Now, the grid, the way we know it, has been around for 130 years. But it's not uh, everywhere. Uh, it has to be uh, uh, you know, profitable. Uh, because it costs money to uh, bring electricity and it's not charity. However, people who are uh, using or who are wanting to use electricity, they already spend some money, whether buying kerosene or, or, or whatever means they have, they already spend some money. So there is a program which I could show in my presentation, uh, maybe during the time that we have, is that uh, we some like-minded people have started a program about 10 years ago and uh, and don't just rely on the local government uh, which uh, hasn't brought the electricity in the last 100 years to all these people so government is doing the way they always do and 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 but the end result is that not everyone has electricity so as a supplement to whatever the local government's uh, initiative uh, we volunteers called IEEE Smart Village uh, has started a program which brings electricity to people. And we have over 100 uh, villages around the world uh, in this program. Uh, and many places you can see the success stories. And as a uh, volunteer individually, you all this participate, you can contribute to this effort and bring electricity to, uh, to the people who don't have it. It's doable, it has been proven. Uh, with that introduction, I turn it back to you. And hopefully during the time that we have, I could show you my slides. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Kellyanne. So that's a very good point. And um, I think what is mentioned is true. All of us can relate to knowing somewhere where we know there's no access to power, which is really sad, considering that is one of the May, you looking at yourself having access to energy and electricity and then imagining not living without that you can imagine what kind of livelihoods these people are going through so and he's also mentioned about isb working group i'm also a part of this now for our region and i think if all of us here can be able to join this group and do the little that we can i bet i'm touching on our last uh, topic for today but i like we said it's all uh, we all have to contribute at an individual level also so i think if we can be able to join the, the ISB team as well and make the small small contribution that we all can, then we'll be able to make a change across the board. So thank you so much. Um, I'll go on to our next uh, item, and this will be directed to Dr. Camille. Sorry, my system is misbehaving a little bit, but I believe, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes, so application of machine learning, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence in smart, uh, in smart grid and use of IoT and blockchain technology of future smart power systems. Thank you, Chaldu. I will be pretty. I'm going first, if you don't mind. Yes, please. <laughs> Yes, let me share my screen very quickly. You can, you were able to see it, right? Yes, it's loading. You can. Yes. Is it visible? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for this invitation. And uh, thank you, Dr. Kolan, for sharing your views and Preeti. And, and uh, it is great to know Sanan Lakhan uh, for your leadership. And actually, this is my uh, brief bio. I will request you to visit my website, www.seliashanas.com, to know about my contribution and to let me know how I can help you. That is very important. And this is very important before going to the, actually I will be touching on the first question that Preeti and Dr. Polan has responded. I'll be touching very quickly. And that was the first PACE day in 2018 that I myself led along with my PACE chapters and all PACE ambassadors. To me, this is not just a human chain. This is a power of networking and of course it is an innovative step. What is important for us that whenever we do or tell something, let us uh, relate our research to one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals like SDG 7, Sustainable Clean Energy is very much related to our theme of um, PACE Day Celebration and we have SDG 11 like sustainable cities and communities. And we have quality education. We have uh, SDG 6, clean water and sanitation. Everywhere we really need the clean energy. So let me tell you that uh, how we are actually can overcome the deficit in power energy that uh, Priti and Dr. Polan has uh, stressed. In our country, we, are, uh, we have uh, done wonder in agri agriculture and we don't buy any food, especially rice from outside. What we did before, that has been done by our irrigation supported by solar energy. And you can see also our uh, wind energy and there are many rural villages also in Africa and also in Bangladesh I have seen where this energy is used uh, as an alternative energy to bring water out of uh, the well. And you can see uh, there are a lot of um, uh, smart home, uh, uh, smart home, uh, smart home uh, concept are coming based on machine learning, based on IoT, and based on blockchain technology. Most important for smart energy management, the smart 
home automation and also the lighting and curtain control based on body activity detection. Since I work on deep learning, that's a very interesting area for me. And office automation and, uh, and a remote maintenance, it is very important maintenance because a huge cost involved in a face to face maintenance. And another issue always coming to our mind that security and surveillance and there should be always a digital media center to control several activities. And whenever we are designing any building, that is important that we design a smart car park management system. Everywhere there are now, there are scope of uh, renewable energy, there are scope of solar energy or wind energy. So these are the way we can actually overcome the deficit, especially the developing countries. Bangladesh has done wonder in use of renewable energy. And these are some alternative energy utilization. You can see how roadside can be used, how mud can be used, and how cycle uh, can be charged. So there are different ways uh, we can use the alternative energy utilization. Let us come that uh, since I'm uh, serving as Power and Energy Society Women in Power resident and representative, I welcome you everyone to go to our website and become a member. If you are a PS member, you have to fill up this website. What is important for us as a PS member, we every month we get PES e news. From where I came to know there are three factors that control the trends future trends in power and energy, which is very much related to the questions that Martha is asking and will be asking. That is the energy storage, integration of renewables, and distributed generation and hybrid model of grid, data-driven technologies, and cybersecurity. I usually focus the third point in my research. Uh, you all know about, uh, may know about electric network frequency. And this is called ENF. It is so interesting. If you record a digital record uh, around the power mains or located near the power source, you can capture that ENF signal. And due to interference from electromagnetic fields originating from the power source or the acoustic hums and mechanical vibration produced by electrical power devices. And these are the ENF looks. You see, this is the ENF from grid A to grid I. That means nine different goods. And uh, uh, by, um, uh, by visual observation, they look different. This is the work of machine learning, pattern recognition, and deep learning to distinguish them automatically. So ENF can serve as a location fingerprint. Why? Because ENF can hold some uh, recognizable patterns of a specific grid. The variations are considered to be uniform for a particular grid, and the variations are separable from grid to grid. In this way, the way fingerprint works as our biometric identification, ENF can identify, can be used as our location fingerprint, and it is very much useful for our security or cyber security in the smart power system. This is one of my major research area. And let me tell you, based on our study, how artificial intelligence are useful in clean energy in three broad categories. One is renewable management, demand management, infrastructure management. You can see a picture here where it's, it's just a kind of a robotic crane and that has been powered by solar energy. And recently I have visited a coastal um, shipbuilding um, area where I am supposed to design a workshop to build the ships. I have seen those trains and the huge electricity from the grid is required there. And this is a smart way that we use solar energy and can uh, control it. And the right picture, you can see the drone imaging, the drone, there are a lot of rooftops. I have visited IIT Delhi and I've seen that the roofs are all solar based. And if you go to China, the solar panels are, you can see in the river. So it is very difficult to maintain those solar panels. So this is a, uh, you see the um, uh, drone-based imaging are used to find uh, the whereas the faults in the solar grid. 
where is the uh, faults in the solar panel so that the maintenance becomes easier so actually there are a lot of ml machine learning and ai projects that are going on and actually uh, they are used to deploy the wind turbine operation data or solar panel sensor data to find the sunlight intensity at the same time it can be combined with atmospheric observations uh, obtained by radar satellite ground water station so that better optimization and better management can be possible also uh, um, ai is applied to energy storage and helping to estimate the useful lifetime of a battery pack or a unit by applying different algorithm this is very important for energy management at the same time ai is also used to focus on energy efficiency enhance feedback on energy performance in the building and solution that can help us to learn and anticipate user behavior so that we can have a optimized approach let us tell let me tell you some examples of ml project like us department of energy they have invested of our 4.5 billion in uh, establishing smart grid infrastructure at the same time you must have heard about google deep mine google deep mine have been analyzing 700 megawatt worth of wind energy to see how it could be optimized so you as a young researcher as a young um, uh, young uh, young professional or a students uh, you must know uh, some of the companies who are already using ai like abb one of my students are working uh, who has uh, now finished phd from north carolina state university now working in abb and she's she's a female very talented student integrating an ai pilot project with a large hydroelectric utility resulting in a reduction of 10 percent of routine maintenance and an increase of two percent in output shell you must have heard about shell shell started to train its workers in ai usage and has already adopted ai for several years now you must have heard about B british petrol incorporating amazon's cloud computing technology for lubricant erp system resulting in 40 percent fast response times and there are a lot of electric companies like uh, spark recognition uh, spark cognition aiming to predict system failure and required maintenance while also predicting against sabotage and cyber security and we talked about aiming to solve asset management and operation variances for grid integration that has been used in via and there is prenov also use drone imaging and machine learning to detect flaws in the equipment so these are amazing technology uh, we must uh, start research in that direction and that is we that will help us uh, to uh, to use this clean energy very efficiently with sustainability scalability and also low cost this is very very important so i want to stop here and when the next question will come i will tell you with some specific examples that how this clean energy can help us can bring benefits in individual level Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. Hope it was useful to all of you. Yes, this was yeah. wonderful. Uh, Preeti, you want uh, you can mention maybe a uh, few things before we go on. But thank you. Sure. Uh, I think uh, Celia covered most of the <laughs> technical aspects of it <laughs> and how it is being used in the. Uh, smart grid as well as the energy sector. But I could share uh, some of the uh, real-time examples where uh, AI and ML and also IoT can be used in terms of uh, renewable sectors, basically uh, wind and solar. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am from uh, this renewable background and I work mostly with uh, wind and solar. So I will be able to uh, give more insights considering uh, those uh, resources so uh, if you take the case of uh, uh, wind farms uh, thank yeah. you very much for mentioning that i'd like us in interest of time i'd like us to 
integrate the question we were to ask in terms of in re distributed renewable energy sources, which is wind and energy that you're going to cover. So can we have it you uh, integrate, uh, explaining it in terms of now how it's uh, being used in the in AI and machine learning as well? I think that will be best, yes? If you agree. Yes, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since okay. most of it are connected, uh, that would be better. Yeah. So, okay. uh, and you would have probably seen the growth of uh, wind and solar over the past uh, many years. So that has been a tremendous growth. And even if you take the case of uh, wind installations last year, uh, we had almost uh, 93 gigawatt of wind capacity added across the globe. So this is a very uh, unique or you can say a record number uh, in spite of the pandemic that hit the entire world. And we also saw the decline in the levelized cost of energy for solar as well. And it is now one of the cheapest energy sources. Uh, so we quite see the development of uh, renewable uh, to a huge extent. And there are many reasons to it. And uh, major ones being uh, the need for clean energy sources uh, and reduced carbon emissions. Uh, if you remember, uh, what Celia just mentioned about uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And there were targets set in the Paris Climate Agreement of achieving net zero carbon by 2050, and also to reduce the global temperature rise uh, to less than two degrees Celsius. And we also see that there is a rising energy demand, which is a major concern all over the world. And with the development of electric vehicles, this will continue to increase. And it is estimated that uh, in the next 10 years, uh, this number would uh, either double or even triple. And with that, there is quite a need for incorporating the digital technologies uh, into the renewable sector, which includes the machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, the IoT, and obviously the uh, blockchain technologies. So uh, this is a quite vast topic. And uh, you can see, uh, if I take the case of uh, wind farms, uh, these are lo uh, located at remote areas. So previously, when there is a fault that occurs uh, in the wind farm, somebody has to go there identify what the fault is and where it has occurred. But when the locations are at remote places, this is very difficult. Getting to the site itself is difficult. So with the installation of uh, different sensors at the various positions, it is possible to easily identify where the fault has occurred. And even before installing the wind farm also, whether there is any problem with the blade, uh, the design, everything can be captured by incorporating the digital technologies. This saves a lot of time. And we can also train the system in such a manner that it can say what needs to be done if a problem occurs. Another key area where machine learning algorithm can be applied is forecasting. This helps the system in scheduling and planning. So based on the demand, it will be possible to dispatch the power and optimize the operation. So uh, in case of hybrid renewable sources, where you have uh, multiple energy sources like wind, solar, storage, by proper decision making, the system performance can be improved using this uh, AI and ML and thereby reduce the losses associated with it. Uh, like, for example, uh, which source needs to be connected to the grid at this time and what amount of power needs to be transferred. All these things can be controlled by using the AI and ML technologies. And uh, in case of solar, if you take a uh, uh, utility scale solar system, so utility scale means uh, a very vast uh, solar capacity farm. So in those cases, when it is a huge farm, uh, it is not possible to identify specifically which panel uh, has uh, any fault or not. So again, uh, a, a person going there and trying to identify where the fault is or where the problem is, uh, it takes a lot of time and that is not uh, physically possible also. So when you have the sensors installed, we can easily identify which uh, row of panels or specifically which panel has the fault and what needs to be done. So uh, similar to the uh, blade example, which I mentioned, this saves a lot of time. And what it indirectly means by saving a lot of time is again, uh, reducing the cost, operational and maintenance cost. So. Uh, there are quite a lot of other applications as well. So uh, maybe uh, due to the time shortage, I'll just uh, stop with this. And uh, maybe I could add some more companies to the list, which uh, Celia mentioned that uses the AI and ML technologies, uh, including my own uh, Vestas. 
and also uh, GE Renewable Energy and Siemens Gamesa. So if you can explore the different companies that uses these technologies, you will get better idea. I, I have sent my presentation to Manal and Talib. So if you can pull it up and present, uh, then I could say a few words. Okay, uh, Astabil uh, takes care of that. Thank you very much, uh, Sid, Dr. Celia and Dr. Friend Preeti. You've both made, made uh, <laughs> Preeti is making me say made. <laughs> So you both made a very insightful presentation in terms of what AI means to our daily lives and also to implementation in, uh, in the energy and renewable sector. And to note uh, companies as big as ABB, Schneider, Google, Siemens, very, very Vesitas, GE, all this mentioned taking into account uh, what AI and uh, machine learning can be able to do for us and what kind of growth it's bringing into the market. So I believe this is Something we should really all put effort into learning and also into implementing. Like a very interesting point, Priti has mentioned. For example, for a company, the sites we do microgrid systems in very remote areas, and you find sending someone to just go and look at a problem can take up to a thousand dollars. That is just transport and just uh, now the cost that it takes to actually go to these sites. And this has to be on a daily basis. So if you go there for weeks, then there's so much money that gets, gets lost in the process. So it's very interesting to see what AI can be able to do for us. And even this, uh, I, an interesting point you mentioned in terms of now the system even being trained, that's machine learning, yes, if I'm not wrong. Machine learning such that it can be able to say what the actual problem is and how it can be taken care of. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Dr. Silly, I'm very excited to note you are part of the first first day. I think uh, that is something we, we are all here today because of the first day celebrations. We are very excited and seeing someone who was a pioneer of this. Thank you very much. It's uh, creating quite a platform for all of us to learn and grow. We are very thankful and uh, going with the same uh, spirit and the same work because you can see the kind of uh, impact it's having in very many lives right now. We are having countries from across the world connecting to come together just to make such a webinar able to happen. So thank you so much, both of you, for that. Tabin, uh, have you been able to pull up the presentation? Okay, wait. Uh, so as that is being pulled up, I'd like uh, all our speakers to maybe consider, I know Dr. Celia, you've mentioned you'll be able to show how AI can be used in the everyday life of uh, members here to make sure that you are able to contribute also at an individual level. So for our speakers, that's the next thing we're going to talk about, how, we, we, how all of us at a personal level can be able to, to contribute when it comes to clean energy and also when it comes to energy efficiency and making sure that we use energy as a, how do I put this, as a, as a resourceful source and use it very well so that as well, as, without any wastages or as minimal wastages as possibly can be. So um, as we wait for the presentation, Ta is this name? Kalyan. I think I'm confusing it with a Kenyan name. It's called Kalyan. So I want to say Kalyan all the time. But yeah, so Kalyan, maybe you can start off. So uh, I see something is coming on the screen. Yeah, there we are. Um, yeah, okay. good. Let's, let's go to the first slide. So uh, as uh, it's mentioned that uh, what can we do in a personal level? Yeah. Yes, yes. What we can uh, do at a person personal level to make sure that we are able to implement clean energy and yeah. we reduce wastage, even maybe say at homes as we in terms of the energy we use. So how can we be more energy efficient even at a personal level? Right. So uh, if you can uh, make it full screen, my presentation, uh, that would be great. Uh, so uh, as you can see that, uh, you know, I, I'm a prime example of what you can be done at, at a personal level. I, I didn't have electricity myself. Uh, here is my friend, my lamp, uh, <laughs> when, I, when I used uh, as a student. So, you know, as when we fly, you, you can relate to it. 
they announced that you take your oxygen first before you help others. So I had to take my oxygen and get my electricity myself. Uh, so I transformed from this to what we have now. And I can have electricity all day. I can turn it on and leave it on all day if I want to. It's affordable where I live. Uh, but I don't do that because I still have the habits from old days. If I go from one room to another, I turn it off. Uh, and people wonder, why do I do that? I say, well, that's my habit. So at a personal level, you can uh, think of uh, people who don't have electricity. And, and even if you afford it, still uh, turn it off and, and use uh, 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 electricity. Uh, if, if you, I'm sure if you have a washing machine uh, to wash clothes, you can do it at night. Uh, uh, even, no, you don't have to, but you still do it. Uh, try to find a way to minimize your energy consumption because that will be uh, there for someone else to use it. Uh, now, when you have everything that you need, now you can think about what you can do for others. Uh, it doesn't happen other way because we have 1 billion people who don't have electricity. And what did they do wrong? You know, they were born and they never had electricity. So it was not given to them. Now what they can do, uh, we have to help them. We have to get productivity out of them. Uh, it's what a waste, it's really makes me sad. But what can you do? So I presented in my slide, if you go to the next one. If you change my slide uh, to the next one. Uh, here is a, a picture of uh, the electricity uh, big from its beginning in late 1900, uh, late 18 something to today. Uh, and I work for Westinghouse. That's my company uh, where I started my uh, uh, industrial working. I was a, a professor from 87 to 90, three years after my PhD. And then from 90 to 2020, 30 years, I work for Westinghouse, various Westinghouse companies. So Westinghouse, as you know, that uh, Nikola Tesla, George Westinghouse, from the beginning of electricity, carried on in pioneering many things. And uh, electricity was my part of, in, in this big company. So 1891, as you see in the picture next to Nikola Tesla, where first transmission started. And from that, we come we have come to this point, but we still don't have 1 billion people without electricity. So let's go to the next slide. What can you do at a personal level? Uh, here is my background. You have the presentation. You can figure it out, uh, you know, the path that I took uh, to get to where we, I am today. And if I can do it, you all can do it. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Uh, I, I, whatever I worked uh, for 30 years in industry, uh, uh, I wrote a book uh, on the left side, and that book is translated in Chinese. Also, uh, affordable version is in, in India. It's just low paper quality, but you can buy that book buy for less for ten dollars but anyway I, I cannot take the credit to myself i maximize everything that i have so my wife and i together co-authored this book and we just finished the second book is coming up in next few months uh, so it will come and it's all energy related how energy can be used more efficiently so let's go to the next step next slide please okay here are the information that i have found uh, and you can see that with the dark uh, shaded area how many people in the world don't have electricity? And it's mind boggling. You know, even though he says 24%, 24% in India, but 24% is like over 300 million people. That's the size of the whole US. So it's a large number, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and other countries. Uh, so we need to do something to bring electricity to them. Let's go to the next one. So 600 million people, another 600 million people in Africa. So that's over a billion people right there. So let's go to the next one. Uh, here is the lamp that I'm showing you. It, I have used it personally, but here are the uh, uh, lanterns that people use today. I took this picture last time I went to India, uh, about a little over a year ago. Uh, so let's go to the next one, please. Uh, here is a project that I'm personally involved. And as a local uh, person, you, wherever you are, whether it's Africa or Asia or anywhere else, you could do something like this. So here is a uh, project that uh, I got involved. I speak Bengali, which is the language of Bangladesh and that part of India. So I can relate to the uh, what is going on to the people locally there. So I grew up near Kolkata area, as you see on the screen. Uh, but 
in general, my interest is in the Delta area in Bengal, whether it's Bangladesh or India side, it doesn't matter. Um, in this area, I could go there and, and relate to my story to the villagers. Uh, here, they don't have electricity. And I went to the highest level in India and I said, when do we bring electricity to these people? And my answer, uh, I, the answer I got, it's not going to happen. It, it's, it's not cost effective to bring electricity to these people who cannot afford it. So I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. So people who are living there, don't wait for somebody else to bring electricity to them. It may happen if circumstances allow, but just assume it's not going to happen. So why you waste your time uh, uh, chasing after something that's not going to happen? So let's do something what's doable. And so let's go to the next slide. And I'm presenting to you what's doable. So this village of our interest uh, has uh, 5,000 or so people. And, uh, you know, I'm involved in this program. It is not a charity because you can never be, you can never be able to do enough to, to, to charity to uh, serve everybody in the world. It, it, you know, my life will go by. It, it will never happen. So we are doing something which is doable. It's a, as I mentioned at my beginning of my speech, that it's a, it's a, it's a chain. You know, we, people are born into a circumstances and it just continues. These people here in this village, they bring uh, uh, their profession is to pick up uh, shrimp from the Bay of Bengal area. It's abundance. Now, we we want to offer a complete package to them uh, and and. They, what do they do now? They pick up the shrimp and somebody else from outside come and buy from them and give them very minuscule amount. And, and, and so they never learn how to take care of that product to the full stage and export themselves because they don't have the knowledge. So, and people from outside who come there, they like to keep this uh, uh, system alive so that they can do their thing. And, and, and these people never can improve and, and make their life better. We want them to get out of this chain of poverty and, and ignorance and, and lack of education, this cycle. We want them to have electricity, send their children to school, use their time effectively, be productive in the evening, learn how to grow your product, uh, which in this case is shrimp, make it bigger scale, do it right there and you export it. Don't give it to somebody else and you stay in your life miserable situation forever. So let's go to the next step. So this project starts with a simple, uh, 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 simple uh, uh, task. Uh, if you are uh, willing to help, find a village wherever in your area which is off grid, and then do a survey, uh, and you will find information like that. What I have uh, in this screen. Let's go to the next one. And you, what we'll be providing them is some LED light, very efficient LED light. It, 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 it is sufficient to get enough light to do something uh, 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 during that uh, time of darkness. Let's go to the next one. So it starts with a survey. And the survey, as I said, somebody has to pay for this, uh, this service. Now, initial part that will be given by us, the volunteers here, we collect it and we donate it to the people uh, who uh, are local. So you have to find that one right person who is capable of taking this gift from us and, and, and we, which we got it from someone else. And then that's a seed money. That's a seed uh, item. And then you generate electricity and people who are buying kerosene to light up their home. You said that, um, well, don't buy kerosene. Now here is electricity you buy instead. With that money, then you grow, make a second unit, third unit, uh, but we'll give you the seed uh, one. And then, uh, so it reduces the carbon uh, footprint because people are not using kerosene as much. Uh, it empowers people to do be productive in the evening. They, whatever trade they are in, they will do more. Uh, uh, if they are showing, they will show in the evening uh, in light. If the children will go to school, they will learn. Uh, they will know more about uh, everything in, in life and uh, about their business, how to prosper. Um, and then go to the next one. Um, next slide, please. Yeah. 
this is what I say that uh, uh, in a Lord Buddha's famous teaching that uh, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. So it li life is uh, is always uh, teaching us something. And I personally adopted lifelong learning, and now I have uh, time to uh, help others uh, uh, because uh, someday somebody helped me and I helped myself to get out of where I was to be where I am today. And uh, I, my life is dedicated to uh, help others and I'm dedicated to bring electricity to people who don't have it uh, so that they can inspire themselves, empower themselves and people around them. And overall, this world, whole world will be a better place for everyone. So if you go to the next next slide. So I presented my thoughts uh, humbly and you know we as a human being uh, overvalue our importance but we're just tiny speck passing through the universe. So that's my uh, thought. Uh, I would like to know what your thought process is but you can make a difference locally. So act locally while you are thinking globally. Thank you. Wow, that's a wonderful finish. Act locally while you think globally. <laughs> that's a very good finish. Thank you so much for that presentation. I believe we've all been able at least to see how we can be able to act at a personal level. And you, like you said, do the doable. So if you see what that big vision you're trying to implement might not be possible to do immediately, start with what you can do. I believe uh, that's a take her home. Start from where you can, start with what you can do, and then continue to build up from that. So that's a very good point uh, to make sure not to wait too long while uh, we find doable solutions. So thank you so much, uh, Kelian. Uh, I believe Mr. Kadun, Jadun, sorry, not Kadun. Are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. You're wonderful. Thank you so much. Sorry, uh, we have taken a bit of time so far, but I believe all that we have learned so far is very implementable and very much uh, helping us in terms of uh, how to navigate uh, the technology sector in the in the energy technology in the energy sector. Sorry. So thank you very much. Uh, I'd like you to tell us one or two things in terms of uh, microgrid integration when it comes to technology in, in, in energy sector? Jadun, if you can hear us. Uh, your microphone is off. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, hi. I, I, I was seen, uh, was listening that our seniors, Dr. Karyan and Dr. Siddhi Shainas, has covered everything uh, in the power sectors. Uh, these are the great people. But my part was uh, the integration and the challenges we are facing while the integration of renewable energy in microgrids. Well, uh, if we uh, talk about the uh, electrical grid and their challenges, uh, the basic part is that that the electrical grid is an interconnected network for delivering electricity from suppliers to consumers. It consists of um, generating solutions that produce electrical power and a high uh, voltage transmission line that carry power from distant sources to demand currents and uh, the distribution line that connect to individual consumers. We face a multiple kind of challenges over there. And uh, the key challenges for smart grids are uh, strengthening the grid, enhanced intelligence communications, intelligent intermediate generations, moving offshore, capturing the benefits of uh, and the storage of repair, repairing of plugging and uh, hybrid vehicles. And there are multiple over uh, issues. The first of all, uh, if we uh, discuss one by one these issues, uh, the first one was strengthening the grid. It means it should be ensured that uh, uh, there is sufficient transmission capacity to interconnect energy resources, especially renewable resources. The electrical power grid is over a century old and is considered to be the largest and most complex interconnected physical system on Earth. Due to its vastness, complexity and being inextricably linked to human and development and involvement, it, uh, it is also termed to be an ecosystem in itself. The other one, second one was I was talking about the enhanced intelligence. Freedom system is uh, basically proposed 
with the purpose of developing technology to revol uh, revolutionize the nation's power uh, grid and henceforth speeding the renewable electrical energy technologies into every home and business. Since it contains many novel devices, the, the future renewable electric energy delivery and management system has features that are different from the traditional distribution systems and uh, which may also allow more flexible operation and improve the supply of reliability. However, it becomes uh, more challenging to protect the freedom system. In the freedom system, the power electronics devices have been widely applied to gain intelligent energy management, improved quality and the other many advantages. And uh, the third one I was talking about the basic uh, of uh, the challenge was communications. Smart grid will integrate with all the components of power system to enhance the performance of the grid. Much of the integration of components relates to communication system that are IT systems and business processes. And uh, the efficient communication is needed for proper coordination of protected devices to adopt uh, the new operating conditions. Whereas uh, distribution networks are designed uh, to deliver power to customers with a, within the certain voltage tolerances without overloading equipment. For smart grids, uh, real-time data and active uh, grid management requires fast and two-way digital communication with third-party entities. Whereas uh, electric utilities use a wide variety of telecommunications, including wired and wireless telephones. Uh, voice and data dispatch, radio, fiber optics, uh, power line carrier communications, satellite and internet, a group based, um, they use a group based protocol for improving the energy distribution in smart grids, which is able to self organize connections between smart nodes from uh, different group based on their available network connections. Whereas the other one uh, is uh, integrating intermittent generations. The economic dispatch uh, deals with the minimum cost of power production in electrical power system analysis. More specifically, in solving this problem, one seeks to find uh, like uh, the optimal allocation of the electrical power to uh, output from various available generators. Prior to the widespread use of alternate source of energy, the problem involved only uh, conventional energy power generators, which use uh, depletable resources such as uh, fossil fuels. It has become apparent that there is a need for alternatives to thermal energy power generation and uh, research for finding the best ways uh, of integrating intermittent generation, including residential micro generation. Uh, that is also a tough task. Uh, the main challenges of uh, operating power grid with a high proportion of generation based on renewable resources include that uh, these resources uh, uh, resources are less predictable than traditional fuel based power plants, maybe far from low centers. So power may have to flow through uh, congested transmission paths, uh, do not generally match the daily cycle of load variations from the uh, unusual operating constraints such as uh, rapid vibrations or complicated weather dependence and uh, that need to be tightly coupled to the storage. It is widely accepted that uh, uh, if we talk uh, like uh, renewable energy sources are the key to sustainable energy supply infrastructure since uh, they are both exhaustible and non-polluting. That's why we uh, the smart grid is most often a worldwide use that these are the green energy sources and non-polluting. A number of uh, renewable energy optimally allocating different types of renewable uh, uh, distributed generation within the distribution system so as to minimize annual energy loss and uh, the number of uh, it, it is associated with the MPPT that is maximum power point tracking electricity in a PV system is uh, generated by individual PV cells operating at a very low voltage and a low current dozens of uh, individual cells uh, are arranged in series parallel configurations with a PV module and tens uh, to hundreds of modules are then arranged in series and uh, parallel arrays uh, to create a high voltage and desired power. But connecting cells in series forces uh, the same uh, current to flow in each cell and connecting them in parallel enforces the same voltage. This is acceptable if each cell is perfectly identically and operates uh, at the same temperature and insulation level. However, uh, because the voltage current characteristics of the PVR cells are non-linear, that's why even small uh, differences can result in substantial loss generation. 
whereas uh, techniques for maximum power and point tracking have therefore become the standard practice. Uh, the other one was uh, moving offshores, developing, uh, if we talk about the offshores and more developing the most efficient connections for offshore wind farms and uh, for other marine technologies is a very key issue. Potential benefits of the smart grid technology are that uh, its central control will now be able to control and operate many remote power plants, uh, optimized to overall asset utilization and operational efficiently. In a uh, proposed to innovative uh, approach uh, for the smart grid to handle uncertainties arising from condition monitoring and maintenance of power plant, unlike uh, traditional maintenance optimization methodologies that only consider the equipment lifetime distribution and adoptive uh, condition based, uh, that maintenance scheme is uh, proposed. The already uh, the difference in that is uh, the other operation related variations are also be considered. This feature is particularly useful for offshore power systems because they are remotely located and uh, difficult to access for data acquisition and maintenance. If we uh, conclude our whole uh, is, uh, presentation, the transition towards a smart grid from current electric grid is one of the most important decisions to meet for electric reliability, that is economy, efficiency and sustainability goals. Only through the well-structured grid, efficient, reliable, and secure communication technologies and integrated intelligent decision-making capabilities uh, that, is, that are associated with the structure and that a smart grid can only evolve. And um, an integrated environment with distributed generation sources, a good transmission management system, outage management system all also inevitable for in this environment. All these have to be brought into the existing power grid in a very cost effective manner. For the same, a lot of uh, research works uh, are being done and still are made with this to the different components of the smart grid. Uh, thank you from my side. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Jadun, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, take us home from this are that uh, to make sure we have uh, microgrid integration, we need to have stable grids in the first place, make sure they're able to handle the implementation, make sure the communication systems are very stable to ensure the microgrids are able to communicate properly and to ensure business and processes continue as usual. And having smart grids is one of the most efficient and reliable ways to make sure that we have better and uh, more efficient systems for our energy needs. So thank you so much for that. I believe microgrids are, is a very wide area and we can have sessions uh, going on also to make sure we exhaust well on this. So thank you so much, Mr. Jadun. I'd like to to welcome someone uh, who has joined us, a very prominent person who's joined us in the group, Dr. MD Anwar Hossein, who is the cha chairman for Department of Triple E. Uh, please, if you would say hello. Dr. Anwar. Uh, please check if your mic is on. Hello? Mr. Kaylan, can you hear or is it my speakers having a problem? I mean, we can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, good. Okay, uh, as we await him, Maybe his microphone has a problem, so sorry about that. And also, uh, thank you so much, all of you, for having joined today. The speakers, your presentations were wonderful. I have also learned quite a bit, and I believe everyone here has learned a thing or two, or even more, there, to be honest. This has been a very insightful session. So thank you so much for all our speakers who joined here today. Uh, spared your time. I know we are all busy people here, but you've managed to spare your time to be here today to share the knowledge that you have. 
thank you so much. I'd like to welcome someone. I've seen a member who has joined. For, sorry, I got the link a bit late. Work and all I wasn't able to share with my team earlier, but I've seen one of the members who have joined and he was a speaker at our at another session we had for Kenya section. Professor Dr. Hamir, please, if you would uh, say a word for the Kenyan team also. <laughs> So before we start speaking, maybe for all the members uh, who are here today, um, your, your moderator for the day, and I'm from the IEEE Kenya section, as the chair, vice chairperson for women engineering uh, for Kenya section, and also the secretary for Power and Energy Society. And this event here today is for celebrations for the Power IEEE Power and Energy Society celebrations. And we are very glad that all of you could join us today and uh, spent your time to be here today. So Dr. Hamir, please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. You can un unmute and speak. I hope you're able to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chaltu. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Professor Samir Hamir from the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering here at the Technical University of Kenya. I am domiciled in both fields, aerospace engineering at my uh, graduate, postgraduate degrees and undergraduate in electrical. I found this uh, meeting very comprehensive and very sustaining on the on the need for renewable energy especially its influx in our countries and implementation uh, and the context of using iot internet of things artificial intelligence are all constituencies of the fourth industrial revolution and using them in energy especially smart grids and one thing that is really important as a suggestion for, for further topics is on energy storage. The need for thermal energy storage, for concentrating solar power, and how can one compare assessment-wise large-scale PV with battery storage versus CSP with thermal energy storage. So those kind of things are very interesting, having molten salt research facilities in play, uh, we also look into solar water heating test facilities, which I was a part of in South Africa during my postdoc days. So those are my comments. I, fu I, f I fully thank uh, Chaltu for the great moderation and all the speakers for the excellent improvisation and understanding because all the things we do as this one of the speakers talked about you have 300 million 12 24 percent in one india not having electricity that's equal to 300 million or 400 million in the u.s and then we have another 550 million who will be without electricity in Africa as well, even by 2030. So the grandness of the SDG goals and our adherence and conformity to them is very, very important. So I would very much like to thank you for this opportunity, uh, for Chaltu to give me this opportunity. I think she has done a wonderful job coordinating and uh, fine tuning. I think I would say she has machined it and annealed it to perfection and so did the presenters. Thank you. Wow, I'm wow. quite happy. Thank you so Thank much. You so, much. Uh, so if you're not, I, I am actually blushing here. It's just my camera is not off, thank God. <laughs> But thank you all so much for being here today. We have had one of the most brilliant presenters today from Preeti, Dr. Celia, Kai, Kai, sorry, I will, I will come for practice for this name after this. Kalyan Sen, yes, and uh, Mr. Jadun today. So thank you so much all. You have made a very wonderful presentation. And uh, Professor Samir, thank you so much for that warm, intro, warm uh, review. So I'd also like to thank the IEEE uh, BBUT group, the IEEE ComSat group also for this wonderful organization. We couldn't be here today without them. Tabil, special thanks to you. He did a very good uh, job in coordinating this. It was not easy bringing all these teams together, but they managed to really do a spectacular job here today. I'm seeing one of the best uh, attendance rates, rates that I've seen so far. So thank you so much. Uh, so the leads for from the groups were Rakib Hossein, 
Laiba Rahman, Sabir Ahmed and Niba Yahim, and uh, also Manal Rahman and uh, Tabil. I've interacted with the, uh, Tabil and uh, Manal, but to the, also to the rest of the team, thank you so much. You did a brilliant job on this. I, be, I look forward to more of this, really, really. So thank you all so much. In case anyone has uh, something to say, I'd like to welcome actually Tabil to say something before, before we close the session. Allow me, please. I know we've gone past our time, but please allow. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I have let not uh, instant my time. Uh, and thanks, Celia, ma'am, uh, PT, ma'am, Colin, sir, and Jardun, sir, for nice presentation. And also, uh, Chaldumar Thais for genius. It's a nice moderate in our season. And uh, I'm not known. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tabil. Thank you. So, Tabil, I hope I said the name correctly. Rakib, you maybe you could mention them, the organizers. Hello, Tabil. Your microphone is off. If maybe you're speaking. Uh, maybe you can introduce some manner. He can say something. Okay. Yes, Roma, Raman. Manal. Sorry, go ahead, Raman. Thank you, everyone, for coming today and all the speakers for presenting very informative session. <laughs> Yes, I see also Dr. Celia smiling. You have a very lovely voice. <laughs> Raman, thank you so much. Thank you. So, yes, thank you so much. Dr. Celia, maybe please, uh, I know we have really run out of time, but please just uh, give us a closing remark for this. Okay, thank and maybe you what much. all of us can do. Uh, no, no, it's a great thing. Uh, it was, I learned a lot from Dr. Kolan because I know him because I work in IEEE SSID Bangladesh chapter and uh, he work, he has a lot of contribution in that chapter uh, in uh, Petersburg along with his accomplished wife and also Priti is there and also Sanaula. I got a lot of knowledge from them. It's a great thing to learning from the little Davids and learning from the seniors. That's important. So I will uh, conclude very quickly uh, by sharing few things very fast way. So let me uh, share it uh, and tell me whether you can able to see it. Are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Actually, we have sent all our students to the um, to the village because they are in we are in lockdown. But small thing we can do, we know the advantage of LED light. We can train our students uh, to, uh, to build how to, uh, how to make uh, LED light so that uh, we, can, we can provide that light to the, uh, to the rural community who really need it. And this is actually led by my friend, Thiago, in Region 9. And you look at this, we have, we, we may not be part of huge installation of the solar panel, but we can train our uh, small girls as an outreach program that how to build a solar panel so that they know about clean energy, so that they know uh, that how this solar panel can support a, 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 a clinic, a, a refrigerator. To preserve insulin, which is very important. This is actually uh, uh, supervised by uh, our president, you know, Frank Lambert. It is Georgia, Georgia Tech student. But you know, uh, uh, they have implemented this uh, power uh, grid, hybrid microgrid for Haitian Health Center. This is very, very important to connect your clean energy to the community problem. 
and I myself, as Dr. Kunlan said, I myself work in IWA Smart Village South Asian Working Group. I have seen that how Smart Village really working tirelessly to energy schools, providing them fans, TV, clean water, agriculture, street life. The most important you have may seen the uh, the village in the Ladakh, which has been out of electricity for many many years. So this solar energy, this wind energy, in collaboration with the smart village. Personally, now I'm working uh, with a, a mentoring a project in the Nagaland. You really can imagine it is out of electricity. Dr. Kullan made me emotional by showing the map of Bangladesh where I was born. I am breathing, I'm competing, I'm growing. And really that part needs a lot of energy. And this is our very own, our university has done this uh, solar rich ambulance because many of our stress, we have grown a lot, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, we are trying hard, but we have a lot of streets where the ambulance cannot go. So this type of community specific, thinking using clean energy is very very important so i will request every one of you after this webinar just find one problem of your corner and provide it technological solution this is my friend uh, angelina from madras because we have sea bay of bengal and bay of bengal you know a lot of seas they go days after days in the seas and they really need those clean energy solar panel for their cooking for the lighting for the mobile charging not only that when they return uh, to their community they really cannot preserve the fishes in our country a lot of fishes are wasted we import a lot export a lot but you know a lot of fishes are wasted because of no uh, preservation process so our solar energy we can use to build small storage system in every house that we are currently um, taking steps also we can empower our women by using a solar power energized bike or small tuk-tuk so then they can vendor the fishes in the rural community so ultimately there are many things. These things are all connected. And this system can be made smart by IoT. And why we will do it, how we will do it, and the most important reason, what benefits it will bring to us. Energy efficiency, user-friendly, it's advanced technology. It will create us a smart life. And also the technology is sustainable. So that's it from my part. Thank you for this wonderful initiative. My appeal to all of you that transform your knowledge into solving a community problem. That is one of the themes of IEEE PACE Day. It's not just writing a research paper and publishing in the journal and writing a paper, also analyzing the impact analyzing the cost, analyzing the scalability, analyzing the sustainability, so that our knowledge can be involved in the rural community where they really need it. Thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity, Martha, and thank you for the patience once again. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. As always, that is a wonderful presentation. And true, thank you so much for audience for being patient with us for having run a little bit uh, of the our given time. But I believe this was worth it. I think we since we are all here, it means it really was worth it. Uh, thank you so much for this presentation, Dr. Celia, Preetha, Preeti, Kai Kailan again, and uh, Kadun. So thank you all so much. And thank you for the team that organized this uh, we take a challenge from Nini from this today saying we are going to solve a find a find a problem in our communities and make sure that we are able to solve them so that's a challenge I believe all of us can take and make sure that we implement so thank you so much all I will uh, don't I, I was taught how to say thank you in uh, Bangladesh I hope I say this correctly yes. so don't know what don't know what but yes. don't know about yes, don't, don't know about all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, we can leave at our leisure.
Chaltu, Goodbye. maybe you are forgetting yes. to take a photo. You can tell the audience to open yes. the video and can take a short. No Very problem. True. Thank you so much for reminding that. Yes, okay. you, you, did you did wonderful. You did wonderful. Thank you. You also did so wonderful. Thank you so much. Just uh, take a photo. Yeah, Tabil is the one taking the photo. So Tabil, let me know when you have. I'm sorry, my my computer has been acting up today. Tabil can take. Okay, I'll take. Mm -hmm. Done. Thank you. Share the photo thank you. and take care. Bye. Bye, Priti. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, so bye, Celia. <laughs> uh, thank bye, you, Chato. Chato. For, yeah. oh, and bye, all the organizers. Thank oh, you so no, much. Yes. Yeah. They've done a thank great so job. Much. Exactly. This uh, collaborative event is really uh, impacting a lot. And that's the first thing which I also noticed when I received the mail. So, a joint venture between three countries is amazing. So uh, keep up the good work and uh, looking forward to uh, more of such wonderful events. Thank you. Take care. Thank Bye. You, Stay safe. Bye, everyone. I love this. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Abel, 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 Abel. No? Abel, Abel.